I shaved my stomach for this because Paul McCartney. You are a twig. How much weight did you lost? I've lost five pounds. <laughs> Quarantine is, I, I've been working out, and then when I work out, I lose weight. That's what the problem is. <laughs> For people knowing, Paul McCartney's still alive. Some people are asking. A lot of people know that. You just don't. <laughs> He's not actually jumping in the photograph. I might have broke my toe. You could take the picture still, you dummy. His arms are like this, this though. Yeah. I gotta get inside. My feet are freezing. A great week on chicks in the office quarantine has been stressful for sure we all definitely want to get out of the house um i miss ria i haven't seen her in forever this is the longest we've gone without seeing each other obviously in years now so it's all pretty crazy um but we had a pretty great week bob saget was on this week he this is the second time he's been on he's basically turned into like our dirty uncle like he makes jokes that are you know, slightly inappropriate, but still makes everybody laugh because that's just that's just the kind of guy he is. That's the humor he has. It is very funny. The interview was hilarious. I was on TikTok and I was scrolling my For You page and there's your wife and she's doing her famous relative check and it turns to you and you got, I don't know, we in like a hot tub or something. It was, I was like, wow, Bob, that was the last person I expected to see on, on TikTok right now. I've been enjoying it. I've seen Rhea on there doing stuff. Oh yeah. Thank you, Bob. Wow. <laughs> Honestly, the fact that you noticed that makes me feel amazing. I'm But the thing I'm doing is what you're doing. You're trying to make people feel better. You, you, yeah. You're doing it and you're going, wow, this is kind of a downer but it gives you something to look forward to, but also people are loving that you're doing it. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with this thing. I'm trying to be funny. I, I'm not trying. I, you I are I, funny. I, I think so. I mean, that's one of the few things I'm really secure in. But yes. um, As you should be. It's crazy that we're still living like this. And I feel like we're finally getting used to interviewing all these people on Zoom or just doing all of our shows on Zoom. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's face in the office again, whenever that is. LCB uh, Movie Monday, we had the we stream Shutter Island. Now, as you're watching Shutter Island, we had the argument that everyone always has. Where do you place your towel when you get out of the shower? There's that shower scene where Leo and Ruffalo come out. I actually Googled Shutter Island shower scene to get a closer look, and I figured I would be the first person to ever do that. Not even close. It was, it was a Google autofill. So anytime you think you're Googling something weird, remember the internet is way weirder. You don't even scratch the surface. That's besides the point. Leo had it up here. Leo had that shit touching his sternum. And anyone who does that is a maniac. I think people who do their towels above their belly button are very peculiar people. Yeah, what the fuck? You're, you're an above belly button guy? Almost no. up to my nipples. What? Dude. I love those towels. My 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 fucking towel is barely on. That shit, like, oh, yeah. if you judged like just by where I put my towel, you would think I have like eight pack abs and those fucking hip arrows that go down. I, exactly the same with me. Like I always think when I look at myself in the mirror, like, damn, if I was hot, I would look so cool right now. Yeah. Like if if I had a deep V cut, like a V taper, I'd look fucking badass. I, mean, I very rarely put wear a towel like that. What do you mean? Like I get out of the shower, I dry myself off, and I put my boxers on. You just walk around wet all day. You you bring your other boxers into the bathroom with you? Yeah. What? Yeah. what? Tell me what. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That's crazier than putting a towel above your belly button. 
Yeah, I, I bring in my new pair of boxers and my towel. I hang them on the doorknob. I take my shower. I I stop the shower. I dry myself off. And I put my boxers on. You just walk out in your boxers? Yeah. That's crazy. Hang the towel around my shoulder. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Hard Factor. Uh, planning Commissioner Chris Platzer has resigned after he got a little too comfortable during a Zoom meeting between city officials uh, and the problem is it was also a public Zoom meeting, so the citizens of the town were watching and asking them live questions. But, uh, but maybe he just wanted to get fired uh, and, and spend more time at the beaches in California. I'm not sure. But uh, he was drinking beer on the meeting and then introduced his pet cat that could be heard meowing <laughs> off the screen. So he picked it up and said, now I'd like to introduce him to my pet cat. And then he pretty violently and it screamed the whole way it was flying off screen. Oh, <laughs> um, no, man. And then after the conference ended, he kept his recording going uh, and let the expletives fly. When he started cursing at his <laughs> colleagues, he could be heard saying, I'm going to call bullshit on you little bitches on the video's live stream. Uh, and so <laughs> Saturday. That's a, that this is a man now. This is a man who really is going to take advantage of these unemployment benefits through the end of the year. Uh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh man. Mm-hmm. On Saturday, Platzer said um, he resigned from the planning commission effective immediately due to COVID nineteen, uh, of course. So well, I can get the <laughs> right. Well, it is, exactly. We'll see. I don't know why he's resigning because if he just waited a yeah, few days, he just got fired. Right. If he waited a few days, they had already convened a, a group of seven a seven person panel this Tuesday to uh, vote him out. Essentially, after that meeting, um, <laughs> he should have waited. Vallejo Mayor Bob uh, Sampion uh, said on Friday, it wasn't one thing, but more of Platz's entire me- demeanor during the three-hour meeting that upset him. <laughs> <laughs> the complete lack of respect <laughs> for the situation. That's amazing. Yeah. I well, it, it seems like he wanted to get... Yeah. Get, get he didn't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yep, yep. Right there. Got him down, down. Team wipe. Oh, huh. seventh win in a row. Too easy. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. Uh, what's up, everyone? Listen. There's no baseball, there's no golf, there's no sports right now. No one can go out and do what they want to do. All we can really do is play video games. And what do we do for fuel for that giddy video game playing? We drink Death Wish Coffee. It's available now in whole green, ground, death cups, and cold brew. So there's all different types of options for all your different types of coffee needs. Uh, with a smooth, bold taste, Death Wish Coffee will wake you up and help you get ready to take on the day. Or if you know, you've been playing all day, you need a little extra booth. Death Wish Coffee, and they want to help you up your coffee game. So they're offering you some coffee, 15% off, use code BARSTOOL, get 15% off your entire purchase when you use code BARSTOOL, get it, Death Wish. I swear by it, I drink it every single day, it's amazing, I like the cold brew, I have the Keurig cups, it's great, get yours today. Explain this one more time, so Dave is his big idea, he's going to capitalize on oil's downfall, so explain what you want to do. So Dante wrote a blog today that... He had a great analogy in it. Um, basically, Russia and Saudi Arabia have they engaged in a price war where they each have a massive supply of oil. But since coronavirus, no one's, no one's driving, so they can't. They have to pay people to take it off their hands right now. So what I'm saying is, we they pay us to take the oil. We just hold the oil, mm-hmm. and then we sell the oil when people start needing gas and shit again. So above ground pools, so water what? tanks, quarries. Where else are we holding this? Um, I was just looking at a map of Illinois. Mm-hmm. So we can like try to figure out a way because Illinois is a broke state, correct? Uh, like we're, yeah, in, we're in debt. Yeah, we're in debt. Mm-hmm. So we'll get Pritzker on the horn. We'll buy all the Lake Michigan, like the water uh, from like here to the Wisconsin border, here to the Indiana, Michigan borders. We have all of that. That's not being used. It's just fucking water. What's over that? I mean, that, this is where this is where you got to think, Dave, because you can't be getting involved with the EPA. You can't put it anywhere. Where it's going to be exposed. That stuff has to be secured. It, it, you can't, can't figure out like Michigan. Okay, 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 okay. All right, nix that idea. Okay, that's out. But uh, we can't do the hole in Egypt. We don't have. We any... don't. We don't know that. There's a big hole in Egypt that's not being used. It's in the middle of the desert. Nobody lives there. What are we doing with the second office? International in waters. What about internet? Again, this is like. You're, what is, do you mean? Is, you can't just say. Okay, international the, waters. EPA is that is that a, a, a American agency? Yes. I know it's uh, United States, yes, America. Yes. Okay, yes. so they don't have jurisdiction over international waters. Yeah, but like, that's like. Is... Or what about the moon? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what All right, now moon? you're talking my language. You want to put oil on the moon? If we can get to the moon and it's you know an efficient cost, then we'll put uh, oil on the moon. Ever told you my moon idea? What's your moon idea? You send like. A bunch of like organic like compost materials and stuff and then you nuke it so it's like a spider-man situation where you just have like 
ultra radiation and you create life in an atmosphere with by nuking the moon when we send like bugs and but what about the waves and stuff what do you mean what about the waves because the moon controls the waves like high yeah, we're not. Time. i mean the gravitational pull will still be there we're not going to blow up the moon we're just going to like hit it with stuff that will create so we have like a backup plan i want to do the same thing to mars okay so you give it like an ozone i think we're on to something yeah i'm lost it doesn't have the metal capacity to stay on this high level yeah metal capacity have a fucking good day and you talk about my metal capacity i'm on to something here you're gonna be working for me one day if you're lucky, if you stop goading, I don't go goading. What are you talking? Chief was goading today. Yeah, and then we hashed out our differences, and now look where we are. We're using the moon to, as an oil reserve. Can I? Can I? And you know, and the best thing is, I it's like, it's like President this. Trump in the Mexican border. They're gonna be the ones paying for it. <laughs> Who is the Mexicans? Not the Mexicans, but someone else's. Not us. The Saudi Arabians and the Russians. And the They're Soviets. gonna pay us for the oil. Yeah. Oh, to take the oil. Yeah. Who's so, going to supply the infrastructure for us to take the oil, though? We have to find someone to pay that, too. Oh, uh, what's Bezos up to? Bezos. 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 <laughs> I mean, he's he's up 25B right now. So he's got some money. So you think he'll just give it to you? That, I mean. You got to write a business plan. Write a business plan. Write a blog business okay. plan. But what you're going to do with this oil? I'm on it. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good idea. Drinking out of a jar? I always drink out of a mason jar. This is my sweet tea out of a mason jar. <laughs> oh, you stereotypical fuck. No, like, there's nothing stereotypical about me. What the fuck are you talking about? I hosted the NFL draft show the other day. Did you see it? No. Hmm. I know. We had all, Friday night, right? we had, stuff. had all the interesting barstool people there. Stuff to do. Yeah, it was cool how you all got neat headphones and I got left out of it. So. Oh, those headphones are sweet. We didn't just get headphones. They also sent us glasses. Uh, they play music, and they send us a nice uh, home speaker. But you don't really have a home, so you wouldn't need it. You missed the email. That was a ruse to give your your family charity. So we all put it. We all threw in for that. What'd you throw in? Some cat litter. You do have a cat. You probably need it. Is that where you threw your lipstick? Because you're not wearing it today. Hey, honey, did we get any horror lipstick this week? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Is that, uh, did you create an artificial background because your apartment's too fucking tiny to, and the camera would, wouldn't get the shot? No, this is real. You'd be looking into your, your neighbor's house where you stare longingly pretty much every night? I designed it to look like a cartoon in the whole apartment because I'm a funny person. Really? You could have drawn you some friends. My Uncle Donnie has a tomato farm, grows the best tomatoes in Clay County. Oh, God. I like, you know, we goof about the hillbilly shit, but Jesus, man. Like, Tomatoes are delicious, Kate. You ever had spaghetti, huh? You down, ever had... at, down at Pete Paul's Mater Farm, we... It's not my Pete Paul. He's dead. It's my Uncle Donnie. We was picking the maters in the yard, and there was a... It is very scary when you don't know if this evil dictator is dead or not. And I feel like your kids feel the same way every time they walk downstairs and see you pass out on the couch. Is he alive? Is he dead? Is this guy gone? Do we have to worry about him anymore? I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not exactly an evil dictator. I think there are some nice dictators out there. Oh, I don't know. Or with those potato skins, you're just a dick with a lot of taters, am I right? Uh, but I think we can all agree on one thing. The most important aspect of this whole saga, page views. We've been yep. real on in with this yep. thing. So keep it up, Kim Jong. Don't tell us yet. The Some seven bloggers that. who are still working hard are cranking out the page views. Sure. What's good? It's your boy, Big Ev, a.k.a. The Don't Walk It Done. All right. This is what's going on in my world. Been working my ass off, been grinding, working out every day, dieting, walking, running, eating right, all that. I was working out super hard last week. Felt something, felt a little, little pop, a little something going on. Give me some pain. Battled through it all last week. On Saturday, I was working out. It was really bothering me. Had to stop, slow down a little bit, rested for a couple of days. Monday comes around. It's really hurting. My stomach's numb and tingly. I'm feeling these sharp pains, feeling like someone stabbed me in the stomach. Go to the hospital, uh, do a CT scan. And honestly, the, the sick, twisted, demented part of my contact brain was like, yes, I'm going to get to duet at least hospital TikTok. But anyways, 
Go to the hospital, get a CT scan, find out I have a hernia. Need to get surgery, got to get it figured out. Everything's all good though. The weight loss journey is not stopping. We're going to get the surgery. I don't know when the surgery is yet. Probably sometime later next week. I have to go in for a consultation with the surgeon on Wednesday. So ho hopefully it's the next couple days after that. But the weight loss journey is not stopping. We're still dieting. We're going to walk at least two and a half miles every day. I'm still going to be wiggling this dick. And everything's going to be good. I'm still grinding. We're still hustling step by step. SXS. Step by step. I'm so appreciative of everyone who's reached out, encouragement, showed love from the beginning of this process to right now. I'm down 24 pounds. I'm feeling lean and mean. I feel great. And we're going to keep it pushing. We're going to keep it going. This isn't going to stop me. Getting a hernia, needing surgery isn't going to hold me back. Might need a few days to lay up after the surgery. But other than that, we're keeping it moving step by step. We're doing something every single day to better ourselves. What better time than quarantine? You're at your house. You're hanging out. You're working, not doing much other than that. This is the time, step by step, day by day, we're working, we're grinding to be better, get better. That's what's going on. You think a hernia is going to stop me? You're out of your fucking mind. I'm getting the surgery. I'm going to be back better than ever. We're losing 50 pounds, 100 pounds, who knows? All I know is it's step by step, we're grinding, and I'm keeping it pushing. Step by step. Let's go. Damn, Brandon with the fucking high top fade. I, I literally cut my hair on, on, on Twitter Dude, live. You look like Fat Gerald from Hey Arnold. Bro, what did you do to yourself? I cut my hair live on Patty's talking to Willie. Women, I gotta I gotta get the baby to Michelle. Wait a second. I'm <laughs> you're large, you saw that shit. <laughs> that was not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a lot better about my shit now. Oh shit. Bro, I can't look at you, dog. Dog, I cannot fucking look at you. You out here looking like one of the extras in blood sport, bro. Man. No, when I take look, the back of my head is fucking atrocious. <laughs> the, the front's not that much better. Yo, this is what David Brand is gonna be. Three white guys. <laughs> I was thinking about going grizzly for the interview, but I was like, man, I gotta get this shit off my face. Man. It looks like somebody said you want the kid or the play, and you say give me a little bit of both. <laughs> Bro, Wait, let me stop, 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 stop. yourself, bro. Bro, somebody said it looked like somebody on Twitter said it looked like I'm wearing a shoe upside down on my head. <laughs> <laughs> you out here looking like the retro Cleveland? Like, it's... Hey, stop, man! Y'all still <laughs> on here? Bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! Chill, man. He said, Lars said, look like I got the kid and the play. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Will, you want to kick it off? You look like Kenny Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> At 1.30 last night, Willie Clone texted me and said, I can't stop thinking about your haircut. So I went to bed thinking about it, and I woke up this morning, and I was looking at it, and I just wanted a regular box, and then, you know, I just, I just cut it all off, man. David Banner was making fun of me. Lars was making fun of me. I ain't got nothing to do but grow back anyways. I'm sick. Send me hats. Stool Streams is an all-encompassing platform for people who are looking to disrupt the standard uh, sporting enterprise of America. I don't know what that means, but it's a lot of cool buzzwords. It's, uh, it makes me sound like I'm in uh, WeWork or something. Uh, it's a lifestyle brand. Uh, what we've done is we've disrupted the concept of having a game room and cameras. And so we're broadcasting, whether it's ping pong, some sort of pop shot basketball, darts, we've got giant Jenga, we've got cornhole. And basically it's gonna be us competing against each other. You'll be able to watch it live. Hopefully one day you can bet on it live. We'll have live odds that go out and we'll have a, a team of a play-by-play -play guy and a, a color guy up in the booth. Big Cat is a commentator and he just kind of, he does whatever he wants. He, he it's supposed to be like, you're not supposed to hear the commentators. It's supposed to be separate. He just chirps me, chirps PFT. Uh, but you know, it's fun, it feels more like you're just in the basement with, with your with your cousins uh, than actual broadcast, but that's all right. All right, welcome in. It is center court time. We have PFT versus Hank. 
three. That is three. Hank is up 2-0 in the series. It's not a counting thing, but Hank is dominating this series. Tonight, another seven-game series. So we're going to get it going. Let's start with uh, who gets to serve first. So what we decided tonight is it's going to be who can blow the biggest bubble. I guess I'm the judge, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm the judge on who can blow the biggest bubble. Three, two, one, blow. Okay, Hank won that one easily. I didn't chew my gum for long enough. PFT's already come up with excuses that he didn't chew his gum long enough. It's true. And it begins. And it begins. Oh my god, PFT is in trouble. Oh my god. I mean, he gets the point. What a move. I've never seen anything like it in ping pong. PFT uses everything when he's Rod got. He throws the kitchen one. sink at him. And Hank can't capitalize. I'm gonna lose. I'm not gonna lose. PFT's got everything to lose. Six point. So it's big head. Oh no! <laughs> Oh, oh man! It was, wait, was that game point? What did you say there? What was the? He what said, was? Yeah, that you know, was game point. What he was? He said PFT's got everything to lose, and so does Big Cat. Oh, and then he whips. Column will stay can undigested. We get, can we get a column? Can we? Oh, let's see that. He says, mutters to himself right now. PFT. Oh, Big Cat has everything to lose. This is now an elimination game, folks. Can. Hank Wait, come back from a 3-1 lead. If PFT loses this, he will never, ever hear sure, the sure, end sure. of it. Hank, you have the ability to make history when PFT had a 3-1 lead and blew it. And there it is. 4-1. to one. Wow, what a moment. What a moment. Don't want to say I told you so, but that is just how sports always work. Gentlemen sweep. I told. I said before PFT was going to win that game because it was the disease of more. Everyone who's watched sports knows the champion, it's hard to repeat. I the mean, hungrier dog is always going to run faster. PFT was the hungrier dog. And then also Hank just lashed out at me and basically blamed me for the entire loss because I was late. Also, and I wasn't even late. A little bit of credit on this end of the paddle would be nice too. No, your hungry dog run faster. I, you you are the hungrier dog. That Hank lost because... He didn't no, take me seriously. He, yes, I, I, I agree with that. I disagree. I, I think that he thought he could just roll out of bed and beat you. I think that Next week will be the real test. It's tough to beat the same team three times in a season. It's like that too. You, know, you don't want to play against your division rivals in the playoffs. The hungry dogs run faster. Fucking infatuated with this chimpanzee named Travis. He died. Okay. <laughs> you gotta, sorry, I jumped Jesus. the gun. I jumped the gun. There's nothing funny about it, Devin. Yeah, so yeah listen, there is. This is the Eddie episode. Sorry. sorry, listen. I'm telling you, this chimpanzee was fucking crazy. So they adopted this chimp. They went to Missouri, Chief. You gotta help me with the details and tell a little bit. Who's they? Okay, so it was family from Stanford. Who's they? It's family from Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah, from Connecticut. They adopted a chimpanzee named Travis. Okay, so this chimpanzee was smart as fuck. It could water plants. It could go on the internet and look at pictures. They knew when the ice cream truck would come around and it would go get ice cream. Travis fucking loved baseball too. He loved baseball. No. He, I swear to God, Travis would wear a hat. He would wear a shirt like on the jersey. Like Travis was like, like just eat, like, like, How many times are you gonna say his fucking name? <laughs> Travis, I'm fucking Travis. Fucking Travis. Dude, Travis. Dude, you don't understand. This is fucking Travis, man. How so, did you get familiar listen, with him? Uh, I, I, I. Googled him one time, or I might have saw it on like Rogan or something, but like someone told me about fucking Travis the chimpanzee. So I'm like, I, dude, he's got a Wikipedia page. So listen, it's Travis uh, chimpanzee in quotes or uh, parentheses. And uh, this guy was just like, he worked, the family who owned him owned a towing company, okay? And he was just like part of the neighborhood. Like he would ride around shotgun in the, in the truck. And he could like- so part of the family. Yes, he could yeah. buckle his seatbelt and like everybody knew him. Like when they go haul a car off, Travis would show up, he'd like hop, hook the car and it would just take off. Yeah. So this one time, this is when they should have, Spark should have, like antennas should have got up. Yeah. Because Travis, like, four years before his death, um, he had an incident where somebody threw an ice cream cone. Was that it? Yeah, he threw some like kind of piece of trash. Like he's riding in the car, riding shotgun, like yeah. he's going to work, like everything's normal. And somebody like threw like something like either an ice cream cone or a piece of paper, like through the window. 
of this car like in traffic and hit Travis and Travis, <laughs> Travis didn't like that. Travis didn't like that one bit. He unbuckled his seatbelt, opened the door and like ran out in traffic to go like chase after the guy. Yes. <laughs> so picture that. So you, got a, you got a chip running like that, unbuckling his seatbelt, getting fucking real pissed off, and jumping out of the car to go whip someone's ass because he's got road rage. Yeah. So picture that. Also, he fucking this. He brushed his teeth. He knew how to use a remote. He uh, he, he liked baseball. Did I say that? Yeah. He was this guy. Travis was crazy, dude. So picture someone throws his trash in. Travis, his chimp, is sitting in the front seat. He just goes, oh, fuck this. He clicks open his seat. He hops out. He chases this fucking guy. So that's like the first episode. They're like, all right, Travis is... Did you see him? Yeah, he just pulled him off. That's Travis. Um, so they're like, all right, like, that's weird. And, like, Connecticut's like, hey, like, you can't just be having Travis run all around, like, the, the neighborhood, like... Got to be permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, this is... We got to shut this down. So, whatever, like, he kind of takes a step back. Like, they take his... Uh, like, they, they, they peel it back. So this... And this is where it gets serious about Travis is in 2009 he um he was he was being bad he wouldn't go back in his cage or something like that so the the guy the his owner the mom calls over someone who worked at the tow truck company who knew him and was like hey will you help me wrangle travis back into the cage this fucking lady shows up and i guess she had a, a tickle me elmo which is travis's favorite toy number one and she just ran up to this lady and mauled her Oh, like almost killed her, like ripped her face off, like ripped she both had, her ears off. Yeah, they, like broke all her teeth. Like whoa. it was, it was like it turned dark real fast. Like we've been laughing about Travis a lot, but like he, yeah, this woman needs like, got some deep seated issues. Like, like they said, Travis turned around and looked at her. It was like, oh my, what? How could you do this to me? Like you know, you betrayed me. So she runs back in. She calls the cops, or she gets in like the car, and he's like fucking trying to open up the car door, like get her out. And she was just locked. Whatever, she just locked herself in the car. And the cops pull up. Travis fucking charges the cop car. He goes to open one of the cops' doors. He knocks off a side mirror, and uh, like it, it was locked. And he goes around the other door to try the other cops' door, opens it, and the cop obviously fires. So yeah. He shoots him like a couple times. Travis trots inside, and they find him dead. What is that? The Irish fiddle? The flute? I don't know, but shit's hard as fuck. Let me go in right quick. You should know I bleed green, but I ain't a mick though. But I got a gang of Irish rolling with my click though. And I think I'm like a quarter Celtic on my mama's side. And I was a Celtics fan up until the season died. So fuck it, I'm a spaz over this beat. And take a shot of Guinness with a tall glass of whiskey. Hair ain't orange like tomorrow morning's piss beat. But put a hurley in my hands, I kill it with the quick speed. Feel getting slippery, but I don't ever slip. See, I ain't playing frisbee, I like it more risky. Try to take my mic and catch my right like a grizzly. So please think twice before you ever try to frisk me. Tiny boy, he could not dance with Donny, but he tried. I tried. He told me he had to dance with Donny, boy, I lied. Donny boy, he came to me and asked me what's the crack. What's the crack? I told him, would you leave me be? Just go away and ride. Okay. I am from the Bay, not the one on the West Coast, the one on the East where they dealt with the red coats. Trying to text the T toad, they was like, hell no. Try to tickle me, yeah, you might catch an elbow. I am not Elmo or any sort of Muppet, so you try to pull my strings and I'm gonna have to cut it. I am not Miss Muffet, I don't eat no curds and whey. I don't sit on a tuffet when I got some words to say. I am flying in the sky like a fucking bird of prey. I am dancing this jig till I pull a vertebrae. If I didn't have a gig, I would still be earning pay. Cause I'm all over the map, so I hope you heard of from LA to Galway, new world to the old one. I'ma spray that grade A till the crows come home, damn back in my kitchen, crack a cold one. A bass out on a patch of grass like an old bum. So, aren't ya?